Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone to Lamahat. What are you guys thinking about? What are you guys um, doing? It is the last five days of Ramadan. And if you're thinking about Eid, yes, Eid is near. But brothers and sisters, it's the days where, you know, you look back and reflect and say, this Ramadan went by way too fast. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make the last few days of this month uh, the best days of, of, of the month. Where the pious would make make this dua, Allahumma ja'al akhir umri, you know, khairu umri akhira. Oh Allah, make the best days of our life the final days. Wa khaira amalina khawatima. In the best acts of our life, the final acts. Wa khaira ayyam yawma alqa kafiq. In the best day of our life is when we meet you. So as we uh, in in you know welcome the the twenty seventh night, the greatest one of the greatest nights in the history of the Prophet Sallallahu life was the nights of Lil Qadr, and the du'as he made, the supplications he made, how people around the world are supplicating, pious people. We're gonna, you know, on the twenty seventh night or the twenty fifth night, like you know, these odd nights that we're witnessing, twenty uh, seventh night coming up. We are supplicating, and there's millions of Muslims around the world supplicating at the same time. Someone's dua is going to get accepted for sure. And inshallah, their duas will be the reason our duas will get accepted because the barakah of these pious people. So we should show shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been around. I am grateful to Allah for you all joining us from all across the world, all across the world. There, there might be people joining us, not even from this world, from outside this world. And let them come, the malaika, they're called the angels, you know. And uh, I know you guys, you know, you guys saw the angels last time in my class. They're sitting here, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and and uh, they're listening. From all the malaika writing everything down, and uh, I am ex- excited to see the reward Allah will give all of us, inshallah, on the day of judgment, in front of the angels that these people please me. Allahumma ja'alna minhum, ya Rabb, ameen. All right, guys, talk to me a little bit on the chat. Tell me what's going on. Um, did you guys enjoy the session yesterday? How was Mufti Abdul Rahman? Uh, uh, we're always making dua for Gaza. Allahumma ansur ahlna fi Palestine, ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, ya Rabb. Allahumma faraj anhum, ya akram al akrameen. We're making dua for them. We can never forget the people, our beloved brothers and sisters in Palestine. It's not... It's not even an option. It's our duty. It's a fard for all of us to make dua for them every time we break our fast, thinking about them, praying for them. You know, we are smiling, listening to the beautiful message of the Quran. It's just, you know, those people are the ones who are really doing the work of Islam, serving Islam, protecting Islam. May Allah bless them and give them success and victory with Afia. All right, guys, let's let's invite Mufti Saab, Mufti Abdul Rahman, to the screen. And uh, you know, hey, assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Bajan. What's going on? It was great seeing you yesterday in person. Yesterday, I came down to the Atikaf. I got to see uh, all the brothers there, you know, and you and Mufti uh, Asim Sahab was there, uh, were there, and then I got to meet Sheikh Abdul Aziz, the orthopedics, you know, and we got to meet Mufti Duhab. You know, so it was nice, man. It was after a long time. Alhamdulillah, it was, nice. it was nice to see you. You were tired, though, man. It was like Mufti Asim is like the bigger brother amongst us when I when he's there. He's like, hey, Mufti Asim. <laughs> what, are you trying, what are you trying to say? You know, it's hard to, hard to make him smile, man. He's just the crack. He's so serious, you know. He's one of our teachers, mashallah. We're so honored to have him. No, no, no. He, you make him laugh. It's good. It's nice to see you when you come. He has a good time. He looks forward to seeing you. You know, mashallah, you came. You had you he enjoyed your company. He thinks so. He didn't say that to me. He's glad you're gone, though. Oh, and that's what I felt. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're messing up his head to cough. So he's, he's like, like I'm, I'm glad talking. you're gone. He's like, I'm supposed to have the best character, but it's been long. Like, this is two more than two hours of showing my character. He needs to leave. <laughs> What's going on, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. 
That's great, man. May Allah reward you for your takaf, make dua for us. We're excited for this uh, 26 Jews, Mufti Saab. Beautiful Jews. Um, but it, overall, time is flying. And uh, seeing you in person was excellent. It was so beautiful yesterday. So now we're back online. I love that. What kind of vest are you wearing, bro? What's up? You gave me this one. Huh? You want me to stand up? Yeah. You see my watch too? <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about your watch, man. Yeah, were, I never you, were. were you showing were you showing were you showing the people the, the, the sofa where the angel sit again? Yeah, yeah. They're not here yet. They're not here yet? Yeah. I just checked. <laughs> yeah, there might be people watching that thing. They're late. Today, today they're late. <laughs> Because we haven't started talking yet. That's why. They're late. Yeah, they're late. They're probably coming from war. <laughs> You're so messed up, man. Jan, let's start. Let's start. Alhamdulillah. Bro. Today is the 26th. Jews. Few, few Jews left, man. La ilaha illallah. So, Bajan, 26 Jews, you know, we know it has some very powerful surahs, right? At the beginning of the 25th, uh, 26th Jews, you have um, Surah Ahqaf that concludes, mm. but then you have Surah Muhammad, Surah Fath, Surah Hujrat, and Surah Qaf, and then Surah Dariyat starts. And uh, I, I mentioned last time in, in our live session, you know, sequence of surahs, I said it was something that came to my mind. It was that, look, Allah starts off, you know, the three surahs that come together, Surah Muhammad, Surah Fath, and then Surah um, Hujrat. It's like, listen, you want the fath, you want the conquest, first you have to follow the Prophet So the surah is Surah Muhammad. Yeah? Then after you completely follow him and obey him, right? then you get the fath, which is inna fatahna laka fatah mubina. Then after that, after the fath, this is when إِذَا جَاءَ نَسُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحُ رَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدُخُلُونَ فِي دِينَ إِفْوَاجَ takes place. Mm -hmm. The fath is when people start coming into the fold of Islam. The fath is not just, you know, conquering lands and taking over places, but it's more conquering the hearts of people, right? And so this is when people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts um, inspiring people, like, uh, to accept Islam. And they accept Islam on their own. Allah, Allah inspires them. We're, we're just tools. Yeah. After that happens... Then you need Surah Hujrat, which is, you know, you accepted Islam. Here's the adab of Islam. Beautiful, beautiful. Without the adab of Islam, then it's, there's no such thing as Islam. So mm -hmm. these are the three surahs in sequence. Now, I love, I love, by the way, I I, I know, what, I don't know what surah ayah you're going to talk about, but if you if you could spend, I love it when you talk about Surah Hujrat and the adab there, you know. And before even you go there, Muftisam, I want to let everybody know that we talk about angels all the time, but also in Surah Haqqaf, all the, our members from our community, other community, the jinns they accepted Islam, you know, they did okay. in the Quran with Saraf Na Ilayka Nafar Min Al Jinniyas in the Quran. Mm -hmm. oh, um, they're not allowed in my house, <laughs> so they're not sitting, they're not sitting there. No, no, they're not allowed in my house. I read Aitul Kursi. You know, the good ones that can come listen to my speeches, but you know, otherwise, you know, فَلَمَّا حَضَرُهُ قَالَ أَنْصِرُهُ They became Muslim, and uh, they came. They heard the Prophet. Somebody said, "Imagine the jinns heard the Prophet recite the Quran." And they're like, what's going on here? Because they knew there was some activity happening, but they didn't know about the Quran and the Prophet. Because they used to first go up to the heavens. And and فَأَتْبَعَهُ شِهَابٌ ثَاقِبٌ You know, then all of a sudden, the, the entrance to the heavens, the skies above the first sky, it became limited. And that was one of the signs that uh, the the last Prophet was, uh, you know, his had arrived. So the, the most of the jinn world didn't know the, uh, about the signs of the final Prophet. Maybe they're educators, they knew. But jinns don't read. They're not, they don't have the ability to read, you mm -hmm. know, and, and write. They they can listen. They can just listen. And and they in the and they don't recite Quran. They cannot recite Quran. So they they listen uh to the Quran and they memorize it like that. So they they came in and they heard the Quran, through the guys, all of them said, take wise. And they went back to their people. And they told them that guys, there's there's a prophet here. And the Prophet recited to the jinns multiple times. Here he did, and then the famous part of Surah Rahman, when the Prophet recited Surah Rahman to the Sahaba, you know, I'll recite Surah Rahman tomorrow, you know, in, in beautiful, beautiful tone. But when he recited Surah Rahman to the Sahaba, and um, and he and he saw the Sahaba quiet, and every time he came to the ayah. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ 
from which of Allah's blessings, you know, from the humans and jinns, so he's speaking to the jinns there. And the jinns resp- responded, La, uh, You know, like, you know, we, you know, what ayah can we deny? Every single thing that you have given us, we understand, we recognize. So the jinns, you know, were replying back to every time Allah asked a question. Do you are you grateful for my son gifts? And the jinns replied back, Yes, yes, we're grateful. So the Prophet said to the Mali Arakum Sukuta. Why do I see you guys quiet? I recite the surah to the jinns. So we're not the only people in the world who are Muslims, who are humans. There are other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that worship Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next Jews, Wama Khalaqtul Jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. You know, and that's why we are the best of creations. We should never be afraid. You know, we should never be afraid of any other creation. You know why? Allah is protecting us from the bad, the evil ones. Allah has given us the Quran. We have the ability to read. The Quran is our protection. So I want you uh, to understand, guys, that even the, the other the angels surround us, the shayateen, who are the bad ones, they are cursed. The way to protect ourselves is read the Quran, Ayatul Kursi. And there are so many other creations of Allah which are all believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want beautiful you mentioned that, and that's I'm gonna today's your day, bro. as we move that that's like the Jannah saw the Prophet, they accepted Islam, that's mentioned in Surah Qaf. Then in Surah Fatih, there's an inter- interesting correlation over here after Surah Muhammad. You have the fact that this is the first time where you see in Medina, um there were mostly Muslims. You had three groups of people. The Muslims migrated there because you had to migrate there. Then you had the people who were they're, they're pretending they were Muslims, you know, living the life of Muslims, but they're munafiqeen. Um, and then you had the Yahud that were there for you know a short period of time, and then they had to leave. But the the day to day interaction with non Muslims and the non Muslims seeing the Sahaba interacting with the Prophet was limited to you know maybe battlefields, maybe once in a while here and there. Now first time you know. At large, a group of non-Muslims are now seeing the Sahaba's interaction with the Prophet ﷺ in Hudaybiyah. Can you tell us, Bajan, you know, what are some of the reflections that some of these non-Muslims had when they first saw, right? Because, you know, accepting Islam and this fatah happening, and we'll talk about this in a second, is, is it, it's, it's continued. Like, for example, um, uh, Mufti Asim was saying, you know, this goes into the other. Mufti Asim was talking today about Imam Hanifa. And he was talking about how these people had so much, people loved them because how much love they had for the people, their teachers, how much adab they had for their, so the people loved the Sahaba because how how they expressed their love for their beloved Rasulullah And remember, in Surah Fatih, there's passages dedicated for the Sahaba, right? Dedicated about them. Yeah. And so you have, Bajan, you have uh, Imam Hanifa, he's a scholar, Mufti, Faqih, but you know, in his house, while he's in his house, he doesn't even put his feet in the direction of the house of his teacher, Hamad bin Sulaiman. Not even, like imagine sitting in front of you. No, in your house, would that if, his, if the teacher's house is north, his feet are not facing north. These are elders. These are elders. These, you know, this have, a, this have a discussion. I don't know if it's if we can even have this online. Some people won't understand this. I'm just saying, you know, like this is high IQ adab, you know? And I'm sure people online can understand it, but this is this is next level adab. You can listen, Bujan. Imagine Imam Hanifa with his mother, for example. Mm-hmm. He loved pleasing his mom so much, so that was his biggest thing in his life. Like, like nothing else in the world mattered to him. It was just say it was just the feelings of his mother. So you know, he, like few things like. And this is this is what he called when you see that interaction, you actually fall in love with him even more. Like this person is so vulnerable, such a big fakhi, but in front of his mother, there's such a you know, just tiny person, right? So, for example, Imam Hanifa's mom asked Imam Hanifa a question, a mas'ala, and Imam Hanifa gave the answer. And the mom's like, No, 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 I want to hear the answer from my local Mawli Sahib, not you. Like, I want to hear from my local guy. So, just because Imam Hanifa loved his mom's feelings to, to make sure she feels good. He took her to the local Mulvi Sahib, the local no, scholar, local scholar. The local scholar, like I'm literally Mulvi Sahib, like the Nasir. And 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 basically 
um, had her ask the question, he gave the same answer to Imam Hanifa. He said, oh, she said, oh, look at his answer. It was amazing. Imam Hanifa didn't mind. One time Imam Hanifa gave an answer for a question. Mother's like, no, no, you know, there's another faqih over there. I want to hear his answer. And so Imam Hanifa went himself to that faqih and says, you know, here's a question. You know what the faqih told him? He said, Imam Adam, I don't know the a- answer. You know the answer. So why don't you tell me the answer? So then I can tell you the answer, then you can tell your mom I told you the answer. Because <laughs> I can't give the answer oh. in front of you. So he, Imam Hanifa gives him the answer. Mm. Then, he to him, then he goes to his mother and gives the answer. When Imam Hanifa was lashed many times by the Mansur for not taking the uh, position of Qadi al Qadat, he never cried. One time he got lashed and his, it had, they left a mark on his face and he cried so much. And the people are like, why are you crying for? He's like, Looks, you know, before all my marks were going to be hidden, but this mark my mom's going to see and it will pain her. And it's going to pain me when I see her in pain. Oof. I don't want to see her in pain. Oof. So this literally... Look you know, when you say his name, Imam Hanif, I'm sorry, all, anyone's names, you know, when, you know, when you say any of these Mashaikh's name, I don't know what happens to people. Like if I hear, when I hear Bukhari or Imam Shafi, I get goosebumps. Just these people, personalities. You know, Imam Shafi has that poem, لَقَدْ زَانَ الْبِلَادُ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا إِمَامَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَبِي حَنِيفَ بِآثَارٍ وَفِقْهٍ You know, كَآيَةَ الزُّبُورِ عَلَى الصَّحِيفَ فَمَا بِالْمَشْرِقِينَ لَهُ نَذِيرٌ وَلَا بِالْمَغْرِبِينَ وَلَا بِكُوفَةٌ وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّنَا أَبَدًا عَلَيْهِ مَا قُرِيَتْ صحيفة. You know, Imam, Imam Shafi was, he was even him had, he, the year Imam Abu Hanifa died is the year Imam Shafi was born. Can you imagine? And he said, this was just unbelievable. I know world has some, no, the world has never seen someone like this great personality. But these personalities came again and again. And so when you talk about these scholars, when even Mufti Asim or you, when you talk about your teachers, the listeners were like, wow, who are these teachers of yours? You know, so that, 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 and that's, imagine the Sahaba. Exactly. Imagine exactly. the Sahaba when they spoke about their teacher, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Ibn Umar radiallahu an, it comes about him. Ma dhukira nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Ibn Umar illa baka. Every time the name Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was mentioned in front of the student of the Prophet Ibn Umar, somebody else said it. Fabaka. You know. In the not even Ibn Umar, like the students of Ibn Umar students, Imam Malik, right? And Nafi', who is a student, and Malik, now the student of Nafi'. Now Imam Malik, he when he would when he would say the name Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the students would be praying, making dua that he would not cry too much. He would not overwhelm himself in love of the Prophet. How could you and I understand this concept? Oh, how? Like, this is like, how can someone even love someone this much? You're right. You were asking me that question that the non-Muslims saw this. The, the, the non-Muslims, the non-Muslims are now seeing. Now, these are, these are, listen, but then to, like, subhanAllah, you know, you saw about the goosebumps. This is perspective here right now, right? Like, mm. the Fath takes place, Bajan, after Fath. You know, we're talking mm. about Palestine, yeah. Gaza, the conquest. See, when Allah SWT uses the word Fath, Right, and he uses the word Nus- not like Nasrullah. Mm. Like Allah uses the word Nasr, right, in the Quran. Can I say something? Can I say something? Even in the Surah Fatah, when Allah says the greatest victory, when Umar bin Khattab kind of like questioned, like, why did we try and sign this Hudaybiyah? Right. Exactly. Remember, like he, when when the Prophet agreed to the treaty. This is all Sirah. You gotta want to learn Sirah. Gotta come to the Sirah intensive in December. It's mm-hmm. anyone that's online and they've attended it, so they will understand. Umar bin Khattab goes to the Prophet You know, he says, Ya Rasulullah. Yeah, but are we not on the truth? The Prophet says, Bala. And he says, yeah. And the Quraysh, the people of Mecca, and Batil. I said, Yeah, he Prophet says, Yeah. You know? And the uh, Prophet said, Yeah. And then he says, um, Didn't you uh, say to us that we're going to do Umrah this year? The Prophet says, Bala. Yes, I did. And, but he said, Then why are we not doing Umrah? The Prophet said, I never said we're going to do Umrah this year. I said, We're going to do Umrah. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, وَمَادَ تَأْخُلُ الدَّنِيَ تَفِيدِينَ Then why are we making this compromise? So there was this like, Hudaybiyah was a very difficult emotional roller coaster for the Sahaba that they went back and forth, even with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the sense like, why this compromise? Abu Jundal is here. Of course, Abu Bakr Sadiq, he, he rises above everyone amongst all of them to such an extent that even when the Prophet asked them to shave their hair, cut their hair, there was a delay in, in responding 
in the adab of Rasulullah's command. And eventually, Umm Salama says, Ya Rasulullah, you cut your hair, you see how your followers will listen. And that was the wisdom of Umm Salama. And the Prophet cut his hair. The barber came and everyone took out their, their blades and you know, and they started cutting their hair. The reality is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is this is I love, I love when you talk about Sirah, it makes it so enjoyable. Keep no, going. No, what I'm about to say right now, Musa, my heart. I wish you could understand what I'm going through. In Surah Fatah, it's right now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want, wants to tell the Umar bin Khattab and all his friends. Yes, you signed a treaty that's not in favor of you. But let me tell you, because you agreed to the Prophet, you are victorious. Oh. I want you to understand. You're going to get what you want, but your agreement to the Prophet is a victory for you. That's, you know, where was, where was the agreement? To the, where was the biggest sign of this surah where Allah praises the Prophet? So some community. Allah knows what was in their hearts. It was difficult, but they gave everything. So Allah says the, the best, one of the best moments in Hudaybiyah is when they were put their hand in the hand of the Prophet and said, Ya Rasul, we are with you, dead or alive, thick or thin. You know, it is, we are with you. But Mufti Sahib, I want you to see what's going on. This is about Hudaybiyah. This is about victory. This is about conquest. What happened here in verse number two? Allah says, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخْرَكَ وَيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَيَهَدِيَكَ الصَّوَاتَ الْمُسْتَقِمَ what, what, that, what, ha- what that would happen here is a few different things. So Allah is talking about the conquest, right? Yeah. And He, and he uses the word conquest first and, and, and وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ later. Mm. Sometimes people, because sometimes we, we confuse... It, it really looks like وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرَ عَزِيزًا It's supposed to be ayah number two. Exactly, or it could have been, or it should have been first. Mm. Okay, but you have you have nusra way after, right? So the fact Allah's first Allah is that's we. But the hadith of Al Bara ibn Azib, ta'duna antum al fath fath Makkah. You guys, when you read this verse, you think it's fath Makkah. Waqad kana fath Makkah tafathan, right? We do think we know that fath Makkah was fath. Wa nahnu na'udu al fath bayat al ridwan yamul Hudaybiya, and we consider. The day that we pledged allegiance to the Prophet on, on the Bay of Ridwan, the day of Hud, that that's called Al Fatih. That is the day where, where you just said that the Sahaba submitted to the Prophet. Of course, they did all their life, but this was a communal display of complete obedience to the Prophet. And Allah says, The Fatih is done now. Khalas. But don't worry about the Nusrat. Nusrat's going to come. And what happened to this struggle? Allah says the struggles that you're going through, there's a purpose behind them. So Number one, you didn't answer my question. I'm gonna go for that, that verse right now. Okay. There's look, this verse is I'm so, I'm so restless. I want to hear it. There's two different, there's two different, you know, tafsirs of this verse, right? One is this the Prophet said, There is nothing more but today a verse was revealed to me. Nothing in this world is more beloved to me than this verse that was revealed to me. And mm-hmm. that verse is Liyakfira like Allah Mataqadam Dambik, verse number two of Surah Fatah, that so that Allah can forgive your sins past and previous, and He can complete His ni'mah upon you, and He can guide you to the right path, and He can help you, a mighty help. Now, this is also if you look, does the Prophet have any sins? No. no. But this is Allah's display of love for the Prophet that he forgives him even when he doesn't sin. And this is the Prophet's display of love for Allah that he asks for forgiveness even though he doesn't sin. It's a combined just This is the this is a dying of people who love each other. You know, like it's it, you, these are things that we don't even understand because you know Iqbali says Khamosh Idil Bari Mahfil When you say Khamosh Idil, so you gotta say it a little louder. خموش ادل بری محفل میں چلانا نہیں اچھا ادب پہلا قرین ہے محبت کے قرینوں میں he says listen you know you you may not understand things stay quiet it's not it's not nice to start speaking and start commenting on things ادب is the first characteristic first most important the first most important thing that you have to adorn yourself when it comes to Loving in the ways of love, the mm-hmm. Prophet had the way of love down, brother. And in Bajan, I, Allah, I mean, let me the Prophet's love for Allah. But I, I just, I, I, I want you to understand what I, I under, I'm feeling here, and that is that yes, Omar bin Khattab and his community had their objections or their own understanding mm-hmm. of the treaty, and and sometimes in that in that interaction, you can start to question 
not question just like you start to humanize the prophet a little bit too much. You know, he is a prophet of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Sahaba, I know you guys are desperate for your victory, but I'm desperate to tell you, you're dealing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who is greater than any victory in the world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that point back in. He does that in azab. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Prophet sallallahu family, you know, <laughs> marriage, divorce, marriage of uh, uh, Zayd, bin, you know, Zayd bin Haritha's, X in the marriages that took place in the in the family destruction structure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wives of the Prophet, you know, and Allah but, then, but then you you that's a perfect segue into the verse that you know if you really want to know what really hits home with that verse is um is verse number uh verse number seven where Allah says wa alamu anna fikum Rasulullah. Yes, that's that's where Allah says this Hazab. Like all these conversations are taking about personal, personal life. So it shouldn't be for a moment that you start to, you know, sometimes um, when you're sitting with, uh, with, like I'm sitting with you, right? I'm talking to you and you have thousands of students. You have hundreds of students. Now, I don't want one of your students to come online and say, look at my Mufti Abdul Rahman, his older brother is talking to him like he's just his younger brother. He's my younger brother, but he's also my, my Mufti Abdul Rahman. I love you and respect you. Allah is saying to the Sahaba, yes, yes, he is your friend. But I want you to also know, <laughs> How can you for a second forget to say salawat upon your Habib? Imagine saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet is walking in the streets of Medina. Oh my gosh, too much it's, it's beautiful how you connected it You know, like, it's like That's why the last verse of Surah Fatah is Muhammadur Rasulullah Let's set the record straight That Muhammad is a prophet of Allah Again, no, no, again It started off like that Yeah, It started off with Fatah and Muhammad yeah, And, and it's ending And I think greater than the Fatah Is Muhammadur Rasulullah Exactly, because the Prophet, remember what the Prophet was saying to the people of Medina when they when they saw after Hunain the people of Makkah were given more, and mm -hmm. the, what did the Prophet? What did the, what did the Prophet? So the people of Hun, people of Makkah were given more spoils. Yeah, the new Muslims, you know, who just, the new Muslim who just became Muslim, and and they they accepted Islam, and the Prophet gave distributed spoils of war, and the uh, the, the Ansar came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah. I don't think it's fair you give them more. We've been serving. Our, our swords are still dripping with blood. And the Prophet says, Sa'adu Ubadah, who are you with? He says, Sa'adu Ubadah says, Ana ma'akum. I'm with my people of the Ansar. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, why don't you gather everyone? He stands up. Faqama fihim khutiba. He gives a khutbah. He starts to speak. I don't want to, literally, it's in my in my notes in this book right here. I I, I, I want to open it up. It might be too long of a discussion. It's too long, just quickly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Alam atikum dallalun fahadakum Allahu bi. Weren't you guys lost? Allah guided you through me. You were poor. Nobody knew you. You didn't have any water, rain. Allah blessed you guys so much. You know? Mm -hmm. And you were enemies. Then Islam came. I came. All the hearts are united, ready to give lives to each other. Isn't that true? And then everyone goes, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. Al Al -manu. And the Prophet flips the script. I love this story. Prophet flips the script. He said, You guys, in Kuntum. But if you said to me, the O Muhammad, jittana taridan fa'awaynak, jittana khaifan fa'amannak. O Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you came from Makkah, nobody was ready to give you refuge. Like, so the Prophet is playing the reverse on the Sahaba. Where, imagine if you said that to me, that I came running away from Makkah, and you gave me. If you say that to me, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Saddaqtumu, you guys are telling me the truth. If, and I want you to know that I came also from Makkah, I didn't have a place to stay. I was afraid. And you guys gave me comfort. You guys gave me support. You guys, sharidan, fanasarnak. Everyone ran away from you. Everyone was afraid to support you. We supported you. This is what the, the Prophet was saying. If you guys said it this way, I would say you guys are telling me the truth. And the Sahaba, by the by the Prophet was doing this, right? The Sahaba are just crying, crying, crying. Like, how can the Prophet even say that we did a favor upon you? And they go, Al manu lillahi wa In that entire speech, the respond of the Sahaba, Al manu lillahi wa 
Al-Mannu Lillahi wa Rasuli and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Man means all the favor, all the all the blessings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We don't deserve it. We yeah. don't deserve it. We don't deserve we it. We're undeserving of this honor. Yes. But only perp- only people who are allowed to express their favors upon anyone is Allah and His Prophet. We have no favors upon you, Ya Rasulullah. Right. Yeah. And then um, the Prophet. That's also a verse in Surah Hujurat. Ya Munnu Na Alaihi Wa Sallamu. Don't do that. Go ahead, keep and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "As habtum, he said, he said, the habtum, he like, oh, jettum fi anfusikum fi lu'at min al-dunya. Like you got disappointed because I give some of this, this little world, little worldly gains and um, spoils of war to some people. I give the goats and the camels and the horses to someone else. He said, as habtum, like, this is what you're thinking. He said, am I tad, am I raditum? Are you not pleased? I'm going to tell you guys." ذهب الناس بالشاي والبعير وأنتم تذهبون برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى رحالكم. Everyone is taking the animals, their spoils of, uh, you know, wealth that they have from goats and camels, and that, for them that was huge. Imagine, right? And you're going back to Medina. You may not have anything in your hands, but you're going back with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. You're going back with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And and they were just crying and they're crying. You know, I wish I was a fly that day just watching this experience. And then um. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, "Anas duthari wal ansaru shi'ari." That the world outside is my upper garment, and you guys are my inner garment. The inner garment that touches my skin. You guys are special to me. And then he says, "Lo salakat al nas wadi an la salakat al ansar wadiya la salakat wadi al ansar." And if everybody walks one way, and I always think about this, if there's two buses, and the way to explain this is, there's two buses, and one bus is full with an muhajirin, and one bus is full of the ansar. What bus do you think the Prophet is going to get on? Oh my God! Bless the Ansar. That's what he's saying. He says, "You guys are part of." And I'm, he's like, "You are me, and I'm part of you." You know. And then he made dua, oh "Allah, please, please, with the Ansar." So this is you going back with the Prophet. The Prophet is greater than any conquest, anything. Wa alamu anna I want to talk. That's it. About that. That's it. Because you know, um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa alamu anna fiqum Rasulullah." That's it. The fact that you have the Prophet of Allah today as a Muslim Ummah, the fact that we have the Prophet of Allah with, you know, the Prophet of Allah as our as our Prophet, this is our greatest nama, right? The Prophet Allah saying, "Muhammad Rasulullah, waladina ma'ahu ashadda al kufar." He doesn't leave at that point. As he also describes the people who are with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're tough. Of, they're tough. They're, they have resistance against the, against the non-believers. People of, yeah. Yeah. The the mention of Ruhama Ubainahum is not because of Ruhama Ubainahum. It's because they're with the Prophet and the Ruhama Ubainahum. Yeah. There are absolutely. so many people who are good to each other, but these were what the Prophet said. Yeah, absolutely. Ashadda yeah. al-Kufar, resistance, like how the people of Gaza have. Ruhama Ubainahum. Allah, Allah could have chose to use any word over here. Like he could have used the word Mahabba, Ulfa, but he used the strongest form of affection, no, which, is Rahim, right. which is which is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between each other, the Ruhama. These are people that you see them prostrating in sajda. Just, you know, in, in in the daytime, they're just standing up for each other, helping each other out. At nighttime, they're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I came to your community in Flint, Bajan. I recited that poem, you know, that I, I was thinking about for the last few days. And, you know, it really like, uh, it, was an Arabic, it was an Arabic poem. I said a poem, أَتَتْنِي فِي سُكُونِ اللَّيْلِ أَطْيَافُ لِمَاضِينَ Listen to this. In the in the silence of the night, a whisper came to me and started sharing the stories of the people of the past, the Sahaba, the Salafus Salihin. So poetic. The moment the moment I started hearing about their stories, wallahi, I lo- my aspirations of dunya went out the door. Because the people of Mecca, the, the new Muslims are going back with you know camels and goats and sheep, and the Sahaba are going back with the Ansar are going back with the Prophet. I don't want that. I want the Prophet of Allah. So All right. Then he says about them now, the night is telling me. Mm-hmm. Weren't we people that at night time we were sujjadan, rukka, rukka and sujjadan. We were just praying at night and we had, you know, this, we had hundreds and thousands of hours on our feet. You know, cars have miles. Mm-hmm. These people had thousands and thousands of hours on their feet. Wow. That's why it comes in one hadith that at the time of death, angels that come to take your soul, there are some angels that are going to come smell you. Literally, they're gonna come smell it next to you, and then we say, "Smell this man's head." And it says, "You know, they say, 'Fi al Quran.' In the way we respect Quran, 
you know, we put, we put on the table, we kiss it. You th- angels respect Quran way more than us. Do you think they're going to dishonor a person who has a Quran in his mind? So, oh, he has the Quran in his mind. And then they say, they say, look at his feet. You know what the you know what the answer of one angel is? And in his feet, he has thousands of his head, heart, and feet. And the heart is siyam, and the head is the Quran, and the feet is qiyam. And he said, This man has thousands of hours of qiyam. Khalas. This person, he said, this person t- took care of Allah when he was alive. Today, we're going to take care of him when his, as his soul leaves his body. Wow. So he's saying, mm-hmm. And at the, in the daytime, we were on the backs of horses on the, on the fields. When the caller of death called us towards giving ourselves for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was no hesitation. And then Bajan, he says, فَمَنْ لِلْأُمَّةِ الْغَرْقَ إِذَا كُنَّ الْغَرِيقِينَ وَالْغَايَةِ الْكُبْرَ إِذَا ضَمُرَتْ أَمَانِنَا When I hear something like that, I'm like, man, let me buckle up, man. Let me buckle up, man. He says, فَمَنْ لِلْأُمَّةِ الْغَرْقَ إِذَا كُنَّ الْغَرِيقِينَ Who is going to save the drowning ummah if we're drowning ourselves? And who is going to achieve the highest highest levels of objectives the highest level which is which is spreading the love of the prophet from all over the world when our aspirations are so small our aspirations are like you well, know, what's up, what's up? imagine if the lifeguards are snoozing what happens to the people who are swimming absolutely <clears throat> i feel like you know we us too making mistakes it's a bigger it's a bigger crime than another average person do you agree absolutely. 100%. That's why your job is to watch my back all the time. As mm-hmm. a younger brother, you got to make sure I don't slip, I don't fall. You know, mm-hmm. لل... say it. Oh. Oh. Allah, that's such a powerful... But then, you know what? I'm going to Google this quickly. Um, there is a poem of Qari Tayyib, bro. Mm. He speaks, and we'll conclude with that. This is under this. While you're, while you're putting this poem up, I want you to know that. You know, <clears throat> it's beautiful. I never, I never ever recited it before. Let me try to recite it, okay? So, and before you start, I want to let you know you recite so beautiful. And yeah. I, want, I want to give you a little bit, I want to boost your confidence. So, everybody, just, you know, <clears throat> says, put, your, put your volume a little higher. Full attention, even if you know, I've never recited this before. I want to hear you. This is Nabi Akram Shafi Azam Duke Diloka Salam Lelo Tamam Dunia Kiham Satay Kare Hue Salam Lelo شکست کشتی ہے تیز دھارا نظر سے رو پوش ہے کنارا نہیں کوئی نہ خدا ہمارا خبر تو خیر الانام لے لو یہ کیسی منزل پہ آگئے ہیں نہ کوئی اپنا نہ ہم کسی کے تم اپنے دامن میں آج I think it's frozen. Oh, I was just, man, that poem was so beautiful. I wish you could come back and recite for us. Um, and Charlie comes back too powerful. It was it was so beautiful that that his whole, today Mufti Doha, Abdul Rahman was in the mood, honestly. He, whenever he goes into Etakaf, he gets so spiritual and he gets so powerful and Honestly, it's it's a blessing to have a family member like him around, who keeps you know keeps my guard up. My brothers and sisters, this was Surah Al-Fatih. This was what the Prophet ﷺ's companions were all about, 
And as we watch the world, you know, not the whole world, but m many powerful states of the world abandon our Muslim brothers and sisters in Gaza. We want to let them know that the horse riders of this ummah and the people who are praying to Hajjad of this ummah are still awake. Um, and uh, there's so much hope in the world, so much hope, so much positivity, even with all the negative press against the people of Gaza. I want the world to know that people like Abdurrahman, Sheikh Abdurrahman, and young students all across the world who are learning this deen, Mufti Sab is back. Mufti Sab, welcome back. I think the internet, I'm done though. Mufti Sab, I, I wanted you to finish it if you don't mind. Really? Please. Yeah, please, please. How about if, I'm not sure if this, the Wi Fi will work, but basically he keeps going. He says, Qadam, Qadam, تمام دنیا خفا ہے ہم سے اٹھو ذرا انتقام لے لو ہے اپنے دل میں یہ ارمان طیب مزار اقدس پہ جا کے ایک دن سناؤ ان کو میں حال دل کا it's a beautiful man. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, the, the hearts of the world today are so soft when they listen and watch what happens to the people of Gaza. And it must, it must translate more than emotions. It must translate into actions and tawbah and repentance. And uh, people who didn't, you know, the most uh, beneficial people to society were not people who just listened and wept, but they listened and acted. They did something to change their family. You, us parents who are there, we are responsible to raise today and tomorrow's leaders in the generation of the Ummah, the Prophet. But Jen, but Jen, you know, the Arabs, they don't understand what it means, but this is a great man. His name is Qari Tayyib, and, uh, you know, he was looking at the state of the Ummah. And all he had to offer was this one last poem when he passed away and he couldn't help the ummah. He wrote a poem down and when he passed away, they saw this poem under his pillow. And he says, he's basically saying salam to the Prophet And he's saying, uh, I'm just, you know, just so heartbroken about the state of the ummah. And my heart's broken in front of you saying salam to you. He's saying to him that, look, we're, at, we're where we ended up. No one is ours. Not nor does no... Is like every single step of our way, we are afraid of someone, you know, looting us and hurt, harming us. So even the skies, even the earth, are have become our enemies. He says that this era and the people of this era have become so, they become budzan. They have, you know, bad assumptions of us. They think we're bad people. They think we're people that, you know, for we, they think we're not nice. They think we're not, you know, compassionate. They they completely flipped the script that we are the ones who came with love, and they say we have no love. And he says, sometimes these people make a joke out of us. Sometimes they want that we show them loyalty. And sometimes they make fun of us that we're not loyal. He said, the whole the world is just a, is an empty place, a, a place of broken people, a place of people just blaming us and criticizing us. And there's no one that can do anything, O oh Prophet of Allah. He says, you know, all, my only request, O oh Allah, is that before I die, you take me to the Prophet's grave in Medina. So, so now, unko mehali dilka. So I can convey this condition of my heart directly to the Prophet and tell him, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Isn't that so powerful? Or Allah Aladim, it's so relevant today as well, too. I bet you the brothers and sisters of Ghazra. These, these pious people wrote poems, said things back 100 years ago. Today they're more relevant. They sound like they were said for today's time. But again, Mufti Sahib, it is such a pleasure having you on. And I was saying when you got disconnected, when you're in Etikaf, something happens to your attitude. Your altitude goes higher, you know, and may Allah keep you for, uh, in the straight path with strong mm -hmm. fortitude, you know. So it's it's just it's such amazing to see you in a takaf and your your time that you're spending with pious people 
making dua. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward people. Take out 10 days just to stay in the masjid in this time and era. It's unbelievable. So God bless you, Muftizab, and all those people who are doing itikaf. Uh, keep us in your duas. And I, I hope to see you tonight. I, I feel like I, can, I should come back again. You know, I want I, you guys need someone like me there, spiritual well, I'm leader. I'm asking where we are. I'm telling to take a picture where it's online. Who, who's go. asking? Yeah, I think you guys, you guys need my presence. There's, uh, you guys need a spiritual mentor. So I'll, I'll come too more often. Just come, but come, come, come. Yeah, please, take care. Take care. please come, bro. Come, you come tonight. Oh, my. I don't want to get you get too spiritual. Okay, come tomorrow. You guys might start, you guys might start floating around and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it easy, okay? Sorry. Sorry, that's my sister, Jane. It's a lot. Is it your company or for the Mirabai stuff? Which one?